Hi, this is a follow-up to my previous video, uh, the Sprinter Instrument Panel Teardown. I've spent the last couple of days playing with this thing, trying to figure out what it does, and I've got a bit more information for anyone who might be interested. So, uh, if you remember from my previous video, this is the uh, panel from the Sprinter. Uh, I pulled it all apart, as you can see, removed it from its casing. Um, and uh, I, I just took a look through and looked up some things online and uh, figured out what some of these chips do. Um, cool thing about this panel is actually everything is disc uh, essentially discrete chips as opposed to them being custom chips, which uh, lets me uh, take a look and, and uh, kind of figure out what the functions of the uh, board are. Um, so I mentioned in my video that there were some logic chips that were at the uh, bottom of the uh, panel. Well, as it turns out, those logic chips are actually shift registers. So there is a power line, there's a data line that takes in serial data, takes in one byte at a time, and uh, based on the byte that's in there, it will set the pins on the chip to either high level or low level. And those shift registers run to the, in the individual LEDs on the front of the panel. So obviously what's happening with this board is that uh, the microcontroller, which is right here, the CPU, uh, that is uh, telling, it's sending a serial signal to these shift registers, which in turn are lighting up the lights each of the panel. So you're running out of oil, uh, it's going to display it on the screen. Uh, the shift reg registers also have a function whereby they daisy chain to each other. So um, I haven't traced out these individual lines yet, but basically, uh, chances are this one is connected to this one is connected to this one, uh, which in turn, you, you essentially the CPU sends a byte to the first one, then the, then as soon as it sends a second byte to that first one, it goes into the second chip, and uh, they daisy chain along going on and on uh, and putting those values in. So that really explains how the alert lights on the control panel are, are, are all handled. Um, the other thing that I uh, figured out was, you know, so, sort of some basic functions on this chip. Uh, this chip has a, a it is a basically, a, you know, it's the brains of the operation. It has a, a memory on there. It, it knows how many miles you've driven, how many K you've driven. Uh, it, it has probably has a memory of some historical stuff. Um, it also has all of the driver functions directly for the LCD panel uh, through these pins here uh, uh, and uh, driver functions for all the other various uh, functions within the board itself. On this side, uh, my suspicion was correct. Those capacitors were, you know, sort of a dead giveaway. This is the power supply here. This regulator uh, is uh, bringing the voltage down from uh, 12 volts or nominally 12 volts down to 5 volts. On this side we've got our 12 volt input. This side we've got our 5 volt output. This is a variable uh, voltage regulator. So actually there's a couple of pins that aren't connected that could be used to uh, vary the voltage. There's a, a few preset settings that they, they allow you to choose from. So it's uh, really just an off-the-shelf uh, regulator, which is a uh, kind of neat. So what I'll do for my project is actually I'm going to use this regulator here um, and I'm going to uh, basically uh, muck with stuff here and uh, I'll use that as a power supply for my uh, my uh, uh, updated uh, control panel. So when I put an Arduino on instead um, and I mount my little project board, I'm actually going to use this power supply. Hey, it's nice, it's reliable, you know, it's obviously going to handle the uh, environment of the uh, the vehicle so why not just use it rather than having to build my own uh, power supply um, I also found the pinouts for these connectors here uh, I found them in the uh, sprinter service manual which is actually really good it's got a lot of detail uh, to be honest with you you know the only two important pins that I found out of these were the uh, ground and the positive supply uh, that allowed me to power this thing up and take a look at it I'm still going to remove these connectors. I don't want to use these connectors, but I might keep uh, those header pins and recycle them. Uh, not sure exactly what I'm going to do there. So, one thing I was able to do was I, I was able to find the power for this board. So it's pin three on that white connector. Um, 
and I just soldered a little lead on here temporarily and then I just found a nice little ground connection and I grounded things out and uh, I connected it to my 12 volt uh, power supply and uh, if I apply power hey it wakes up this is great so something's happening these uh, motors reset you you can't really tell in the video that they actually reset as we went along but they did reset um, and uh, I have some power and I have uh, a starting point that I can use to reverse engineer this display and figure out um, uh, essentially what are the control lines for that display and what this waveform should look like uh, so the the display itself is it, using it's a liquid crystal display the liquid crystal displays essentially there has to be a an uh, AC voltage differential between um, two pins one is sort of a plate a control matrix that uh, controls a bunch of the characters and then the other is a character itself and so if there's a voltage differential between them uh, it turns into a uh, a black spot that you can see that voltage differential has to be AC because if you leave it in DC it'll actually uh, I guess burn the crystals out or cause them to stay stuck so the secret is is figuring out what those waveforms are for the control lines and for the actual individual characters character lines and then from there you can easily drive this display uh, something I've done before I uh, did it for a, uh, a uh, AC controller for a Mercedes um, it takes a bit of uh, investigation and, and work but it's it's totally possible so that's the approach that I'm going to take so just very quickly what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, sample the waveforms coming off of that display and that'll let you see what I'm talking about regarding uh, you know how we uh, how we can identify those waveforms and, and and how they how they look in the grand scheme of things so here's one of my this is actually one of the the control uh, plate sort of lines here so I'm gonna power the screen up and then I'll touch that and, and test it testing it with my oscilloscope probe here okay so that's basically the control signal uh, on the oscilloscope uh, so you can see there's multiple voltage levels you can see there's a sort of a complex digital waveform that's that's happening um, and basically what I need to do is I need to uh, uh, do the sort of the inverse of that to some degree on the character lines and that will allow me to uh, display characters as as, uh, as we go along um, so what I'll also show you is I'll show you what it looks like for something that a character that isn't lit up so I'll take one of these pins in the center and I'll start measuring those and you can see there there's a very simple uh, square wave being displayed that is um, uh, specifically in phase with the uh, the uh, control signal so that nothing is displayed um, I'm going to move on let's reset this here and move on to a character that is being displayed so somewhere around here I've got characters that are being displayed and you can see there is a uh, slightly more complex waveform there and that is is synced up with one of the uh, sort of those back-end grid um, grid waveforms in order to to make the characters appear an interesting one that you can see here and I'm going to reset this again is that you'll notice that the uh, there's some dashes flashing on the display well what I can do is I can measure those and if you take a look at the scope you'll actually see see it flashes there it's off there it's on there it's off and then it's on so it's varying those waveforms keeping them um, out of phase out of uh, yeah out of phase I guess with the uh, the control signals and that is causing um, it to display on the screen so as long as I can replicate that with the Arduino I'm good which uh, fortunately done before uh, know how to do it and it's just a matter of uh, getting getting to the uh, actual act of building it as far as constructing it is concerned I'm basically going to use H bridges in order to control these um, I am probably going to uh, control two motors with one Arduino uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to just go with a an Arduino Mega and try to control everything 
at the risk that it might be a bit too slow to do all the work that it needs to do or if I'm going to separate those out into um, uh, some of the Arduino Pro Minis which I really like they're just you know a small little chip and you can wire up really quickly uh, so I may do that or, or I may take take the the bigger CPU approach and, and uh, go from there I still have to make those decisions um, I'm going to keep this LCD display. I'd like to replace it with something a little bit more interesting, but there's nothing that fits this form factor nicely. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And uh, um, if I want additional information to come out of this panel, I might use some of these unused lights. There's some sort of obscure functions that uh, certainly a 1984 G class doesn't have, and I'll, I can light those up to indicate uh, you know particular states that I want to to be aware of. Um, so that's a, that's about it for now. That's uh, uh, the additional stuff I've figured out in my investigation, and I will uh, keep you posted as I go along on this project and move forward with it. Thanks for watching.